Hello, it's Ruby, and today I am going to be sharing a readathon with you. I recently finished at university studying English literature, and since then I've been in a reading slump. I thought I'd be reading loads when I'd finished, but I've barely read anything, and so today I will be spending the whole day reading and hopefully getting out of that slump. I actually think the last readathon I did was in 2020, which is a long, long time because I love filming readathons, giving myself the excuse to spend a whole day reading. So I'm really looking forward to today. But before we start this video, here are five quick tips on getting out of a reading slump. Number one, go to a bookshop to see all of the things that you want to read and just get yourself excited about reading again. And on the same grain as that, number two, talk with somebody else who really loves books. Next, number three, this is really, really important, the most important thing. Don't put pressure on yourself to read a hard book or a classic. Just read the book that you really, really want to read most. Something which you are going to enjoy, which you're not going to have any resistance to reading. Number four is kind of similar to that. I'd recommend reading quick or easy books to initially get yourself out of a reading slump. Hopefully it will motivate you to keep on reading. And then finally, number five, make a note of all of the books you want to read next, put them in order or make a physical pile of your TBR. I've only one night or one day and there's this vast dangerous garden waiting out there undiscovered and unexplored. Dazzling white the Picatees shone, the golden-eyed marigold glittered, the nasturtiums wreathed the veranda poles in green and gold flame. If only one had time to look at these flowers long enough, time to get over the sense of novelty and strangeness, time to know them. But as soon as one paused to part the petals to discover the underside of the leaf, along came life and one was swept away, and lying in her cane chair, Linda felt so light, she felt like a leaf. Along came life like a wind, and she was seized and shaken. She had to go. Oh dear, would it always be so? Was there no escape? The descriptions in this are just exquisite. Uh, I feel like Catherine Mansfield is very good at nature writing, and nature writing is some of my favorite to read. I wake up later than I was hoping to. I wanted to wake up at like 5.30 or 6, but I ended up sleeping quite badly. And so I got up late and started this readathon at 8.30 instead. It's now currently 9.45 and I've finished my first book of the morning, which is Catherine Mansfield's At The Bay. Technically this is a short story though, so no, not a book, but it's a short story. And I've been really wanting to read some more Catherine Mansfield. I read one of her short stories for one of my modules last year and kept on meaning to pick her up again, but hadn't. And I'm really glad I finally read this. So this is about a family, three generations, grandmother, mother, and children who go on holiday together. There isn't really a plot as such, but that very much fits with what it's like when you are on a seaside holiday. We kind of flip between conversations and events, but they're not really interconnected in the way that you would expect. But that is typical of real life um, because not everything does connect in 
a straightforward way. It kind of better captures that languid lack of consistency which you tend to get on holidays and in the summer. Clearly an exquisite nature writer and I definitely want to read more of her because of that because nature writing is some of my favourite writing. The other thing which I really like about this and kind of I would say like the main driving force of this book is basically just musings on mortality. It's a short story about how life is short and how it's restricted and how we don't have much time to live it and I don't mean that in like a kind of carpe diem sort of way, it's not telling us to seize the moment and act recklessly, it's more a calm acceptance that life just is short. Yep, sorry I'm not going to keep on rambling anymore but I really like this, it's a very quick read, this is only like 55 pages so really really short, it took me an hour. But yes, I would probably give this 4 out of 5 stars. And now we're going to move on to the next one, so I have made a stack of possible books I might want to read today. So many books that I've wanted to read recently. I've been in a bit of a reading slump and um, I think that especially comes from post degree stuff. So here is my stack of possible books to read. I think the one I'm going to read next is The Child in Time by Ian McEwan. Um, I really like Ian McEwan. He's one of my favourite modern writers. Um, but equally I'm kind of fancying going on a walk and in which case... I might bring this with me and read this poetry anthology on the walk. I actually think I might read A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I'm up to page 20 and I'm actually now going to go on a walk because it's a really nice day. and I read about half of the poetry anthology. I've now got myself an iced mocha and I'm sorry, I know it's not tea. I recently discovered coffee and I actually like it. I got back from my walk and I was just really, really craving a mocha. I'll put the rest of it on the screen, it's really easy. Now I'm going to return back to A Room of One's Own. It's also really different to what I was expecting. There's this wonderful line actually about I. I made a note of and I'll quickly share. I is only a convenient term for somebody who has no real being. Isn't that great? And then to be telling through the character of I. Anyway, I'm going to get on with reading this and I will check back in with you when I'm finished. Okay, I absolutely love this. I need to share this with you. Virginia Woolf is writing on different writers, female writers, and currently um, talking about Life's Adventure by Mary Carmichael. And she's thinking about the writing style of Mary Carmichael and how that differs from um, male writers in terms of syntax. And she says, So I tried a sentence or two on my tongue. Soon it was obvious that something was not quite in order. The smooth gliding of sentence after sentence was interrupted. Something tore, something scratched. A single word here and there flashed its torch in my eyes. She was unhanding herself, as they say in the old plays. She is like a person striking a match that will not light, I thought. But why, I asked her, 
as if she were present, are Jane Austen's sentences not of the right shape for you? Must they all be scrapped because Emma and Mr Woodhouse are dead? Obviously, this is in context of her making a large argument about um, women rebelling against literature conventions. But the really cool thing, and I, 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 I think she just does this so brilliantly and like actually picking up, when you read a sentence, you can tell when something doesn't sound quite right. And it is jarring and um, it makes you have to reread the sentence because there's just something about it which isn't quite right. And then that something which isn't quite right gets you to think about something and you, it kind of gets you to concentrate and hone in on one particular part of the sentence. I just thought she described it brilliantly, so thought I'd share it. Um, yeah, currently on page 61. It's really good. I love this. I can't believe it's taken me so long and it's one of those books that everyone should read. This was exquisite, one of the best things I've read in such a long time, easily five out of five stars. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about my thoughts later. I just want to read everything that Virginia Woolf has ever written now. I've only read The Waves and a few of her essays, now I just want to read everything she's ever written. <laughs> it's actually got really cold all of a sudden. So I'm gonna eat this. I'm not actually gonna read whilst eating. I'm going to write some reflections and thoughts on A Room With A View. I'm not kind of like in a review sense. I just want to write and let myself write. So I never actually said this, but I moved on to reading Frost in May by Antonia White, which had been on my TBR for quite a while. I finished lunch and 30 pages into this and I'm really enjoying it so far. I like the plot. I'm not so sold on the writing style. It's very simplistic and to the point, um, which yes makes for easy reading, but it's not kind of, it's not doing anything interesting with the writing. And that's particularly striking after having read A Room of One's Own, where obviously Virginia Woolf is playing the writing and syntax. This book is, I'll just quickly read you the blurb, it says, Nan de Grey is nine when she starts convent school and 13 when she is sent away in disgrace. Quick-witted, resilient and eager to please, she accepts the cloistered world with the enthusiasm of, of the convert. Her only deviation from total obedience is the passionate friendship she makes. It's giving quite a cool insight into convent life and what it would be like to go to a convent school, which I really like because I don't know much about convent schools at all. Um, and apparently, according to the introduction, a fairly accurate depiction and representation of convent schools. I lit some candles and read at my desk for a little bit. because it was actually a really pretty day so I got a picnic rug and I sat out on the grass. starting to look rather ominous. I think there might be a storm. It's starting to rain. Yeah, 
yes it did very much start raining and so i retreated to the treehouse which was such a good idea because it's very sheltered um but you can hear the rain and i stayed at home for a little while until i got too cold reading at the end of the chapter just now and just open the book and something massive has happened which is revealed in the first line of the, of the chapter sorry and I was not expecting that at all <laughs> no that's so sad it reminds me of that scene in the Simpsons where Lisa's upset and Mar Marge goes Oh, Lisa, is a book character having difficulties? I thought it was going to happen, and then was lulled into a false sense of security, and then it did happen. Sorry, no spoilers, I won't say what it is. But you should read this book, and then you will know what I mean. I just had a few parcels come and so I thought I'd give you a mini haul in the middle of this video. Daily Rituals by Mason Curry, uh, which I saw in a bookshop in Exeter last year and didn't get it, but kind of regretted not getting it. So it's basically looking at the daily rituals and like the routines of some really successful people in history and like interesting people in history. So you've got Escott Fitzgerald, Benjamin Franklin, Einstein, uh, Sylvia Plath, and there's just there's not very much for each one there is just like a couple of pages but it looks really interesting i also got this for my friend for her birthday it's the illustrated edition of the ocean at the end of the lane by elise hurst uh which is gorgeous like this is so beautiful and she hasn't read the book and i really think she'd like it especially with the illustrations i also got this one vintage i had a jumper just like this um but it got ruined in the wash and so i ordered another one finally i was sent loads of teas from dragonfly which is very exciting the two i'm most excited about are the rebos choco chai an oolong tea with undertones of sun-drenched fruit I don't think I've tried anything like this before so looking forward to trying this anyway i'm actually going to get on the reading Frost in May, some more. About three quarters of the way through, I'm really, really loving it. So these are the books still on the list that I was potentially thinking about reading today. So I've got The Child in Time by Ian McEwan, Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy, As Good as Dead by Holly Jackson. It's the third book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and I've wanted to read it for a year and have just been waiting for the perfect time so didn't read that. And also this is the World Book Day book by Holly Jackson. Um, I was also thinking about reading this which is I think it's a short story by Joseph Conrad. This one, oh my gosh. As soon as I heard this was coming out, I pre-ordered it um, because The Magic Far Away Tree was one of my favorite books when I was younger and Jacqueline Wilson is my favorite writer and Jacqueline Wilson has done a rewrite of The Magic Far Away Tree and so yeah, I pre-ordered this months ago and it arrived yesterday and I'm excited to read it and I was thinking I could read it today but I just haven't been in the mood for it. Um, I don't, I'm not really in the mood for reading a children's book. Also, the undercover, that's so nice. And then the final one is one that I borrowed from my friend Anna, and this is a graphic novel. I think I'll probably finish the night by reading this because it shouldn't be that long. This is White Bird by RJ Palacio. As you can see, it's a graphic novel of um, Julian's grandmother during the war, I think. <laughs> Thank you. 
decided to read a few short stories from this collection. I'm not going to read the whole thing, I might read two or three but I'm just really in the mood for it and then I think before going to sleep I will finish reading White Bird which I just read the first 20 pages of before my shower. It's a couple of days later now and I just wanted to talk through the book. I read on this readathon and what I thought about them because I only really talked about the first one, the Catherine Mansfield one. Also tea time with Ruby, I've got a mug of the Rebus Choco Chai here, which I'm going to try. Um, I've just added some oat milk, like this much oat milk. It tastes a lot like their Rebus Chai. There's not much chocolate in it. It does taste a lot like their chai. I guess it's slightly maltier. It is really good, I like it. So I read five books and then I read two short stories from Murder in the Age of Enlightenment and I'm just gonna talk through these in order. I am gonna start with the Catherine Mansfield. Also, I don't actually think the lighting's that good here so I might move back to my desk. So the first book I read is this short story, At the Bay by Catherine Mansfield. Catherine Mansfield was one of the new women's writers at the turn of the century. Obviously very short and quick, as you can tell from the size of this. And I would recommend it if you like slow paced nature writing. So if you enjoy reading the romantics, for example, and I suppose if you're looking more for writing than plot, sometimes I'm really craving something fast paced, something which is going to keep me super engaged, but other times I love reading slow paced writing. I think it's a good one if you're going on a beach holiday and you want to encourage yourself to be more meditative and attentive to the landscape and the world around you and just take things more slowly. This short story I think would encourage you to do that. This is very different to Death in Venice, but if you like Death in Venice, I think you'd like this. The next book I read was, well, this collection of poetry, Ariel by Sylvia Plath, Sylvia Plath's most famous poetry anthology. I have read Sylvia Plath's complete works before, but it was a long time ago. I read her complete poems when I was in year 10 or 11, so it's been a long time since I read them. I've read the occasional one since, and I did briefly do a Plath reading group at university, and so I did read, um, reread some of those poems then. But I've never read the famous Ariel Collection, which was published two years after Sylvia Plath's death, and is notoriously raw and dark. I don't know if this is the kind of poetry anthology I'd re recommend reading all at once. It's better to dip into because each of the poems is very heavy and so reading them all in close succession is actually quite a lot, it's quite intense. Um, she mainly writes about death and postnatal depression in this collection and it differs from her earlier work. So she published Colossus while she was still alive and um, that is a bit more lighthearted. Equally though, most of my favourite poems by Plath are in this collection and I, I'm glad that I actually finally got round to reading it in full. Also, can we just appreciate how beautiful this edition is? It's one of the Faber... what's the name of them? The Poetry Firsts collections? Um, I've seen these in Waterstones and this is the only one I own from it but I definitely want to collect more. The next book I read is A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This is actually an essay. I didn't realise it was an essay going in. A Room of One's Own had been on my TBR because I want to read more Virginia Woolf but I didn't actually know what it was about at all. I had no idea. So I was surprised when I started it and it was an essay and I'm really glad that it was an essay. I actually really love reading essays. Tentatively say probably I prefer essays to short stories. You've got the fusion of fiction with their musings and I think that's really really cool to see and it really I think essays like this encourage you to look at things in entirely new ways. They're extremely and utterly different to academic essays, which obviously get you to think about new things, but um, like the actual writing of this is beautiful and she's paying attention to syntax and she's paying attention to like effect in a way that academic essays don't because they're more about being clear and concise. So in A Room of One's Own, Virginia Woolf is preparing for a lecture which she's been asked to give on women in fiction at Oxford. The essay is written over the course of two days. You see her walking around Oxford, attending meals, uh, thinking about this question, you know, what is the relationship to, between women and fiction? What does that mean historically? And so it kind of turns into, it turns into a journey of thinking and she takes you along her thought process. And the ultimate thing that she is, that she realizes and is arguing is that there has been so little fiction from women historically because women didn't have access to the things which would allow them to write. An education, meaning time, a, a room of one's own in which to write. It's such a seminal piece and it remains just as relevant today and it can be applied more widely to oppressed groups. It's an enlivening thing to read and it's also beautifully written and I would highly recommend this. I'm so glad I read this. Definitely the best thing I read on this readathon. Even though I also adored this which is Frosted May by Antonia White, uh, one of the beautiful Virago 
classic editions which came out in 2018 um it's got this nice stained glass window effect this is about a girl who is sent to convent school when she is nine she didn't grow up Catholic, but her father converted to Catholicism and it tracks four years of her life at the convent school. It's a book for adults, but it reads kind of like Mallory Towers, not in terms of content, but just form in having school stories, uh, you know, individual events, um, as opposed to it being like one overarching plot. And over the course of the book, we, we see her develop into a teenager and become more questioning, a little bit more critical, a bit more subversive. The thing I really love is how much theology is within this as well. I used to study theology, it's something I'm really interested in. And it's cool that we get an insight into Nanda's theological beliefs and justification for believing certain things. It explains Catholic theology in a really accessible way through fiction and through conversation. And I just say if you want to learn a little bit more about Catholicism, maybe this is something to get you into that. It definitely taught me a lot about convent schools and I don't know how accurate all of it is. I mean, I'm just trusting the introduction saying that it's fairly accurate. I can definitely tell that a lot of it is dramatized, but it does give it a little bit of an insight into convent life, I suppose. And especially the thing that I found interesting is like the theme of conversion. Nanda has recently converted to Catholicism, um, whereas a lot of the girls she's going to school with were raised Catholic. And that's a dynamic that I didn't know anything about. And so it's quite cool to see that explored through fiction. Then after that, I read some short story, two short stories from Murder in the Age of Enlightenment. This is one of the Pushkin Press beautiful books. Um, this was sent to me actually. And I just think the cover is stunning. Just all of the Pushkin Press books are beautiful. I've only got three, but the three I have are stunning and I love them. So um, this one I bought and I read when I was 15. And then these two were kindly sent to me by Pushkin Press. But this is a collection of short stories. The author is a Japanese writer. These are short stories from an unparalleled master of the form, sublimely crafted and stylishly original. His writing is shot with a fantastical sensibility. The thing I was really struck by actually is how different all of the short stories in this are. A lot of the time when I read short stories by one writer, especially if they're in the same collection, you expect them all to be like fairly similar and along the same lines and kind of of the same kind of style. You know, you kind of know what to expect, but all of these were utterly different. Like they could have been written by different writers and that did kind of throw me off and I didn't like all of them. Since I read them, by the way, I have finished this. So there are seven short stories in this. Two of them I actually really didn't like. Two of them I really, really loved. And then the other three I was kind of impartial to. They were quite good. They, they, they were good, but not uh, like stand out. So the first one of the ones that I liked is uh, really, really short. It's right at the beginning and it's called The Spider's Tale. And it's like a moral fable. It's like a parable. And then you've got The General, which I didn't really like. It's much more conversational. It's um, a little bit more realist. And the other one I really liked is the final one in the collection, which is Cogwheels. This is about a man whose brother-in-law commits suicide and it's his kind of ruminations after that. Apart from the suicide, nothing really happens. Instead, it's highly reflective and we see the narrator just kind of wandering between all of these places and like randomly making decisions to go to new places and then suddenly he'll be looking at something or observing something and you're not quite sure where it came from. But it's, it's kind of psychedelic and really um just like really really cool like how um how he's playing with writing how he's playing with space if you want something which is experimenting with form a little bit and experimenting with writing style i would really recommend cogwheels in this collection um i don't know if i'd recommend all of the stories but um honestly i'd say buying this book is worth it just for that final story and for the beautiful cover and then the final book that I read in this readathon is White Bird by RJ Palacio, which is a graphic novel. And this was kindly lent to me by my friend Anna, who actually has a YouTube channel, Anna Talks. So if you want to follow her there, then definitely do. And she's also done the illustrations for this year's Academic Planner, which is really, really cool. Um, and I can't wait to share that with you because she's so talented and it was so cool to be able to work with her on the project. And anyway, so RJ Palacio wrote Wonder. Julian is one, one of the characters in Wonder. He's the bully. And this is Julian's grandmother's story, which he's telling to him. Um, so it's a story about the Holocaust. Julian's grandmother was Jewish and she was hidden by a family during the war. It's a story of kindness, the same themes as Wonder. It very much fits into that world. Beautiful story, which is like so many of those stories of kindnesses, like real stories that we have from the Second World War and centers around that message that our assumptions about people are often wrong. I think this is, this is a really important book because Holocaust education is so necessary. I think it's really cool having it told through a fictional survivor because Julian says to his grandmother, I want to learn more, I want to know about your past. And then we have it kind of told through her. And as 
the last survivors of the Holocaust are passing away. Asking for people's stories becomes really important and like listening to them becomes really important. So um, I just, yeah, I, re I really like how this was formatted and sorry, spoilers, I am going to spoil this. Um, skip if you don't want to, if you don't want to know. It doesn't, it doesn't like, it's not a spoiler as to what actually happens, but I just really love at the end. So, so clever. This was written, uh, I think it's in 2018 when you had the migrant crisis in... America 2019 and people weren't being let in and families are being separated and if you look right at the end you have the grandmother looking at the newspaper and seeing these headlines and uh, that is this kind of realization that it's happening again and then you have this wonderful illustration in New York of people protesting really 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 great ending this book was a very quick read really worth reading love anyway thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it i really want to do more book related videos because i love filming videos like this and this readathon was so much fun um it's definitely got me out of my reading slump which i'm really glad about because i was in that reading slump for way too long oh also now this is brewed for longer the chocolate taste is really coming out and oh my gosh oat milk and chocolate is such a good combination anyway thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you have a productive week i almost forgot before i finish this video i am going to write a letter to a viewer because that's what i'm trying to do at the end of every video i really like this one I've chosen this lovely literary postcard because I thought it was quite on trend for this video and I'm going to write this to you letters here. Which I hope I'm saying right. I've just written this and this is your sign to go and write a letter to somebody right now. It can, it doesn't have to be long, it could literally just be a postcard, but just write to somebody. Um, I really think letters are a beautiful way of sharing our appreciation for people and um, so even if it's small, I encourage you to do that right now.